As I was, uh, first of all, I am so sorry for what happened. And uh, we know that this is not the fault of uh, people sitting in Pakistan, but there is only, um, I would say, a terrorist act. Uh, and I am strongly condemning it. By the way, we should not allow them uh, to interrupt our activity. Therefore, um, though we lost some of the participants, they will uh, little by little uh, find their ways to join the meeting. But anyway, if we can take the cell, cells from uh, plants and produce cell suspension, or we can take cells from medicinal plants and then um, do some sort of engineering on them, either by metabolic engineering or screening of high yielding cell lines, then we can uh, use appropriate bioreactor uh, to uh, 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 propagate them. And then uh, after that, we can extract uh, the secondary metabolite that is of medicinal use, and then we can uh, uh, market them as you will see. This is a plant, uh, a medicinal plant, uh, and its uh, hairy roots are valuable for uh, extraction of the secondary metabolite used for PMP, plant-made pharmaceuticals. The bioreactor you see in here has been designed by ourselves, by our own. own. So these uh, are not very difficult technologies. Everybody can do that. And we are really prepared to share the technology that we have. And then when taking out few uh, hairy roots, we can have um, tons of these hairy roots and uh, from them we can extract what we need. This is another uh, plant, uh, which is again a medicinal plant, uh, Echnacea angustifolia. Uh, this is also used for ornamentals in the yards. Um, uh, but uh, the, the bioreactor you see in the middle is disposable. So we can just use it once and uh, this is just $30 or less than $30. We can discard it, but we can uh, have a huge amount of what we need, the cells we need or the tissue we need for uh, extraction of proper um, uh, medicine. Okay, you see in here, there is a uh, disease or condition called Goche. Goche disease is the result of deficiency in the activity of or deficiency of the enzyme beta glucoserberosidase, resulting in the accumulation of glucoserberosidase in the liver, spleen, and bone marrow, and sometimes in the lung, kidney, and intestine. What we do is we just need to transfer the gene encoding for glucoserberosidase, or glucoserberosidase, in fact. Uh, we transfer the gene to ca carrot. This is the transgenic gene, uh, sorry, transgenic carrot uh, that is uh, expressing the molecule we want, beta glucoserberosidase, and then take cells from this carrot, make callus, take the callus, make cell suspension, transfer cell suspension to the cell culture in bioreactor. And then from that, we need to go through some uh, downstream processings for extracting the same enzyme and injecting them to the uh, patients. So this has been done in Iran and in uh, our uh, institute. These are platforms. This is not only to say that we can produce beta glucoserberosidase. We can produce any PMPs in this platform. One revolutionary 
new technology called green bioprinting is in fact an additive manufacturing technology processing leaf cells from the plant kingdom on a scaffold. The scaffolds may be of different material. That is what uh, people are working on it. And it is a very promising new immobilization tool for plant cells that enables the development of new bioprocesses for secondary metabolite production, as well as monitoring methods. So this is cutting edge technology. This is very new, and I'm sure Islamic countries will be able to use that. This table is a very, very, very long table. It is perhaps seven pages, but I have cut it on the, the first page I am showing. These are the examples of plant secondary metabolites of pharmaceuticals used, obtained via medicinal plant cell suspension cultures. So you can see that tissue culture or cell suspension culture is not only used for uh, agricultural purposes, but also can be used for uh, medicinal purposes and drug preparation. Well, this is not something to be proud of. 10 years ago in 2010, I was invited uh, by Dr. Iqbal again in Karachi. It was the first time I visited a lovely city of Karachi and uh, uh, Samar Yusuf, where they were kindly invited us to establish uh, IRBIC, which is the sister uh, organization like uh, PABIC, uh, their counterpart in Iran, with the help of Dr. Ibal Chaudhry. We are thankful to him and we will never forget it. Then I presented this slide, but the upper portion only. I showed the status of biotechnology at that time in 2010 in Muslim country. I said, tissue culture is being practiced in almost every Islamic country. Molecular markers is being used almost in every Islamic country. Biological nitrogen fix, uh, uh, fertilizers or uh, uh, biological insecticides is being produced and used in Islamic countries. But when it comes to genetic engineering, research is not even research is available everywhere. Only at that time, Egypt, Pakistan, and Iran were using genetic engineering at research level. And at that time, I said Egypt is doing uh, field trials and field release. Egypt was the pioneering country to produce, uh, for a few years, produce transgenic plants. I guess it was uh, transgenic maize or cotton, I don't remember. Uh, at that time, people in Pakistan, I'm sorry to say that they wouldn't, at least politicians wouldn't declare that they are gro uh, growing uh, transgenic cotton, but I knew that, therefore I put them there. Iran also used to produce uh, transgenic rice, at least at limited amount, limited area. But as you can see in here, now in 2020, I would like to share the same slide with you, the same table. But this time, this is only Pakistan that is doing genetic engineering that involves tissue culture. And uh, I have to admire Pakistan for that. But unfortunately, Egypt and Iran has, well, they have some internal problems um, with biosafety issues, nonsense, regulatory issues. And we are losing the battle. Anyway, this is not something to be proud. So we have been regressing instead of going forward. This is why Islamic countries are performing very well in terms of uh, scientific progression. 
You can see in here the global ranking of top 10 Islamic countries in citable pub, uh, publication production. This is from Saimago, everybody can go and see it. So Iran producing 62,836 citable document ranks first among the Islamic countries and 15 in the global rank. Sorry, my global is a little bit, I have to, okay, correct it. Uh, Turkey follows with a relatively big gap, uh, 47,000 papers, 18 different, uh, 18 uh, ranks, 18. Indonesia followed by Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Pakistan, Iraq, and Nigeria. Uh, and this is their rankings. Therefore, scientifically, Islamic world is progressing. Their rank is uh, improving, but still it is very unfortunate to see this situation. Okay, let us to conclude. I have only a few uh, slides to, for conclusions. Uh, in conclusion, I have to say that biotechnology and tissue culture help to attain food security. How? They increase production, therefore availability uh, part of the uh, food security is already there. Improves productivity, therefore people have better economic access because then you have higher productivity, food becomes cheaper. Improves food safety, therefore the food safety element of the food security is also there. Reduces chemical uses, therefore environmental safety is also guaranteed. And reduced lands and water use, Therefore, sustainability is guaranteed. As conclusion, I have to continue stating that political leadership in the Islamic world has been hesitant in realizing the significance of agricultural biotechnology for sustainable socioeconomic development. This paragraph I have copied from a statement uh, published by Dr. Iqbal Chowdhury and Dr. Samar Yusuf themselves. So I have to give the credit to them, but this is my conclusion as well. OIC members, sorry, OIC member countries need to pay more attention on research expenditure and the agriculture and food security. Islamic countries have regressed compared to 10 years ago in the use of modern biotechnology in spite of admirable scientific growth and improvement. OIC member countries need to increase existing levels of collaboration. Comstec, with the leadership of Dr. Iqbal Chowdhury, I'm sure can accelerate and mediate these collaborations among OIC member countries. Plant biotechnology should be given priority Tissue culture is a technique that is available across all developing countries and should be used more extensively, but not only for mass propagation. Unfortunately, sometimes when we talk about tissue culture, people automatically think that we are referring to mass propagation. Mass propagation is the first step. We should not stand on the first step only. We should move. We should move forward. So tissue culture as a technique is available, but we need to use it more extensively. Tissue culture can help to attain the sustainable development goals and food security. Capacity building programs is needed for less developed OIC member countries. Scientific community in Iran is extending hand and is prepared for any type of collaboration. I cannot end my presentation without acknowledgement of my own government for supporting my research. Uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Chowdhury, uh, my beloved brother in Islam, 
and coordinator general of uh, Comstech, my good sister, Dr. Samer Yusuf, public, and all of you participants for your attention. And this is the best time of my life when my products, products of my science, my efforts is making uh, farmers happy. And uh, I hope that all of us can uh, make uh, some contribution for agriculture and sustainable development. Okay, that is done. Uh, thank you very much for this and I'm sorry for what happened. Very much, Thank Professor. you, Doctor. Such a wonderful presentation. Certainly uh, added lots of uh, knowledge and understanding, and I'm sure that uh, participants have uh, been uh, absolutely uh, enlightened to see your contributions and the way you have presented everything. Uh, we hope that you continue to uh, help us uh, to share the benefit of your experience. And I'm, I'm, I'm confident that uh, with your patronage, Comstock will do lots of uh, activities in future as well. Thank you very much, Brother Vesa. You're welcome. Uh, with your permission, sir, uh, can we take questions from the audience? Yes, sure. Uh, so audience, do you have a question? Please um, ask Dr. Saab about it. Do we have a question? What are PMPs? What PMPs stand for? Plant made pharmaceuticals. Plant made pharmaceuticals. That refers to any type of uh, proteins or secondary metabolites that are produced in plants that has uh, some medicinal uh, use or medical application. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bezad. Do we have another question? Uh, so in case we do not have any more questions uh, for Professor Bezad, I would request uh, Dr. Summer to please kindly move ahead with the hands-on session for our participants. Okay. Thank you so much, Khazina. Thank you so much, Brother Bezad, for such a knowledgeable presentation. Uh, participants, let's move to the second part of uh, today's workshop uh, that is actually based on the hands-on training. And uh, uh, as we all are on virtual conference, so uh, we uh, are presenting the whole procedure of, uh, of a plant tissue culture uh, as a basic one, of course, um, uh, that covering the each and every part, including uh, the preparation of the instrument, then media preparation, cleaning, sterilization, initiation, selection of your plant till uh, last shooting, rooting, and, and until uh, the field. So um, with this, uh, I, I want you to be, uh, please be interactive, uh, post your questions uh, in the chat box uh, during that uh, video sessions. Uh, our team is ready to answer your questions. And, uh, and at the end of each video, uh, we will also invite you uh, to ask questions if you have any. So let's proceed to the first video that is the preparation of instrument uh, for the tissue culture. Tools and apparatus for tissue culture experiment. Apparatus required for tissue culture are forcep, scalable, and blades, 
petri plates with two filter paper. All the apparatus should be in spotlessly clean condition. Wrap scalpel, forcep, and blades in paper, brown paper, or newspaper. Wrap battery plates. Put cotton in the jars which will be used to clean the laminar flow hood. Fill the bottles with deionized water, which will be used to sterilize explant. These things are now ready to autoclave and will be used for tissue culture experiment later on. Media preparation of stock solutions for MS Media. We desired amount of micronutrients in one liter of distilled water, one by one, and later <coughs> for further use. <coughs> we desired amount of micronutrients in one Bye. liter of distilled water, one by one, dissolve them properly, and store in refrigerator for further use. Prepare all the stock solution and store them for further use for the preparation of MS Media. Preparation of MS Media. Take distilled water from distillation unit. Distillation unit comprises of two units, deionized water and distilled water. Take 700 ml of distilled water for preparation of one liter of MS media. Turn on magnetic stirrer and put 700 ml of distilled water in a beaker on the stirrer and also add a magnetic bead in to dissolve the nutrients properly. All the stock solutions of MS Media are now ready. First, add 50 ml of micronutrient stock solution into the MS Media. Add 1 ml of micronutrient stock solution with the help of micropipeter. Add 1 ml of vitamin stock solution in 1 ml MS media. Add 5 ml of 
EDTA stock solution. Weigh 30 grams of sugar or sucrose for 1 liter of the media. Now add 30 grams of sugar into the media. Adjust pH of the media to 5.7 or 5.8 with 1 molar NaOH or 1 normal HCl. Make up the volume of the media in a measured cylinder. Make up the volume up to 1 liter with distilled water. Weigh 8 grams of agar which will use to solidify the MS media. Add agar in MS media solution. Microwave the media to dissolve the agar completely for 10 minutes. Add phytohormones like auxin and cytokinins according to the plant requirements. Media is now ready to dispense in 250ml glass bottles. Each jar contains measured quantity of 30ml of MS Media. Close the gaps of the jars carefully and tight. And proceed to the autoclave. Turn on the autoclave and open the lid. Place media jars carefully in the autoclave. Close the lid properly and check the outlet wells. Set autoclave program for 30 minutes at a temperature of 121 degrees Celsius and pressure of 15 psi. After autoclave, the media jars will be kept in growth room for 3 to 4 days to check any sign of contamination. In case you find any sign of contamination in your media jar, remove and discard that jar immediately. Contamination free jars will be used for further experiment. Media jars can be stored at a temperature of 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. Process of removal of the contaminated jars from the growth room. First of all, collect all the contaminated jars and autoclave them. After autoclave, media should be collected in a plastic bag and proceed to discard the jars are then washed and dried.
I request all the participants to please mute their mics. And if you have any question, please ask at this stage. Uh, and I'm sure that you can, uh, you are actually receiving the answers from our team uh, in the chat box also. So any question from the participant? Okay, then uh, we proceed now to, uh, uh, to video number three. Cleaning and preparation of laminar flow hood. Wash your hands properly with hand wash or soap before entering into the tissue lab. Before starting your experiment, you need to put on your personal protective equipment like lab coat, mask, pair of gloves, Laminar flow wood is used to maintain the sterility of the cultures and in order to maintain the sterility, we need to sterilize our hood first by exposing it with UV light for 15 minutes. Turn on UV light and cover the laminar flow hood as UV light is hazardous for health. Turn off UV light, remove the cover, turn on blower and light. Spray your hands with 70% ethanol before starting your experiment to disinfect them properly. Disinfect the surface of hood with 70% ethanol. Spray the surface of hood with 70% ethanol and wipe all the excess ethanol with autoclaved cotton. Disinfect all the objects with 70% ethanol you are planning to use during your experiment or need to bring into the hood like media jars autoclaved battery plates Sterilized tools, put the tools into the sterilizer and turn on the sterilizer. Laminar flow hood is now ready to use for tissue culture experiment. In order to turn off the hood, remove all the waste and used petri plates and media jars. Turn off sterilizer. Disinfect the surface of hood with 70% ethanol. Remove all the excess ethanol with autoclaved cotton. Turn off switch, light and blower and cover the laminar flow hood.
Initiation. First step is selection of explant. For initiation step, we need explant. So we are here at the greenhouse to collect our explant. We will select healthy, fresh, disease-free, and young leaves as explant. Do not select old, diseased, and yellow leaves. Young, healthy, fresh leaves will be excised and dipped into water. And will be taken to the lab for initiation of tissue culture experiment. Explant can be birds, flower, or stem. Cleaning and sterilization of explant. Sterilization requirements are 70% ethanol, 20% bleach, and sterilized distilled water. Once the explant has been selected, take it into the lab and wash under running tap water for a few minutes. Shift plant into the jar or a screw capped bottle before taking it to the laminar flow hood. Turn off UV light after exposing the hood to the UV light for 15 minutes, remove the cover, turn on light and blower, wear pair of gloves and sanitize your gloves with 70% ethanol before starting your experiment. Disinfect everything before placing it into the hood with 70% ethanol like explant ethanol which will be used for further sterilization of explant 20% bleach autoclaved distilled water Discarder. Arrange objects in a way so that there is enough work area for the transferring process and spray your hands with 70% ethanol before starting your experiment. Firstly, explant will be sterilized with ethanol. Shift the explant into ethanol with the help of forcep and shake it for at least 30 seconds. Disinfect the explant by dipping it in 20% commercial bleach that is sodium hypochlorite for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And shake it after one to two minutes. So that all the explant get properly exposed and at this point, explant will be considered sterilized.
After sterilization, explant will be washed with autoclaved distal water three to four times in order to remove the traces of ethanol and bleach. After finishing your experiment, disinfect the surface of hood with 70% ethanol. Any question? Okay, proceed to the next one. Inoculation of explant into the media. Objective of this stage is to achieve an aseptic culture. An aseptic culture is a culture without contamination of bacteria or fungi. Put on pair of gloves and sterilize them with 70% ethanol. Disinfect the sterilized explant with 70% ethanol before taking it into the hood. Take your tools out of the sterilizer like forceps and blades. Take out the explant from water and put it on petri dish with two filter papers. Cut the edges of leaf with the help of scalpel as bleach might damage the edges of the leaves. Hold the leaf with farsa and cut it into small pieces with single sharp cut to minimize the release of phenolics with sterilized farsa and scalpel under highly aseptic condition to minimize the contamination rate. Once the leaves have been excised, we will inoculate into fresh MS media. MS media contains different concentration of cytokinin and auxin. Inoculate two or three pieces into the jar and gently press on the explant with the help of farsa to ensure that they make contact with the media. Cover the jars and wrap them with paraffin. Parafilm will stretch to seal the jar to avoid any kind of contamination. Label the jar properly with the type of plant, type of media and date. These jars are now ready to shift into the growth room under controlled condition. Disinfect the surface of food with 70% ethanol after finishing your experiment. Turn off switch, light, 
and lower. Keep the jars in growth room under control condition with photo period of 16 hours light and 8 hours dark at a temperature of 24 degrees plus minus with 40% relative humidity. Shooting Second step of tissue culture after initiation. Objective of this stage is the formation of shoots. Hood was exposed to UV light for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, turn off the UV light and remove the cover. Disinfect the hands and surface of hood with 70% ethanol before starting the subculturing of Procom light bodies. Procom like bodies are somatic ambroid like structures formed in in vitro during germination from where the shoots and root arises. PLBs can be induced directly from explant, such as shoot tips, flower stalk, buds, root tips, and leaf surface. The indirect regeneration of PLBs can be done by embryogenic callus culture using solid or liquid suspension cultures. Media ingredients are the key factors for successful PLBs regeneration in in vitro. Protocol-like bodies developed under the leaf surface of expand. As you can see, these are the protocol-like bodies developed within three months after initiation. Before taking the jars into the hood, disinfect them with 70% ethanol. These jars are now ready to be sifted into the fresh medium for shooting purpose. Before starting experiment, take your tools out of the sterilizer like forcep and scalable. Arrange your autoclate battery plates and jar. Always use fresh cultures with no sign of contamination. Use fresh media with additional hormones which are BAP, benzylaminopurine and NAA, naphthalene acetic acid, which are growth regulator to initiate the shooting. Open the jars carefully. And take out the cultures without touching the edges of the jar. And do not use hot forcep as it can damage the culture. These are small percom-like bodies ready to be shifted into the fresh media.
remove phenolics, dried and dead parts before shifting into the shooting media to avoid contamination. Carefully shift these porocom-like bodies into the shooting media one by one. And do not use hot forcep as they can damage the porocom-like bodies or your cultures. Avoid crowding of cultures into the media jar as these cultures need space and nutrient for their growth. Seal the jars with parafilm to avoid contamination. Label the jars with culture name, date, and type of media. These jars are now ready to shift into the growth room. These jars are kept in growth room with illuminated condition at temperature of 24 degrees plus minus for 90 days. During this time, observe the cultures regularly for any sign of contamination. Keep visiting your growth room after 2-3 to three days to check the contamination status. If you notice any sign of contamination in media jar, discard the jar immediately. This is a contamination free jar. Keep it for further growth in your growth room. After three months, shoots have been developed and they are ready to shift into the rooting media. Thank you so much for uh, all the participant to be, be interactive in uh, during all these videos. Uh, we are receiving a number of questions from your side. Uh, as uh, sent uh, in the chat box request by Khazima, please uh, drop your email ID and full name uh, in the chat box in order to uh, prepare <laughs> for your e-certificate. We will circulate the feedback form tomorrow and uh, uh, please proceed to the next video. Rooting is the next step of tissue culture after shooting. The objective of this stage is to prepare plantlets for transplanting by shifting them on rooting media to develop roots. Expose the hood to UV light for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, turn off UV light and remove the cover. Turn on lower and light. Wear a pair of gloves and disinfect your hands with 70% ethanol 
before starting your experiment. These are the developed shoots without any sign of contamination. Spray the jars with 70% ethanol before taking them into the hood. These are the well developed shoots ready to shift into the rooting media. Rooting media contains IAA that is indole acetic acid and IBA that is indole butyric acid. Take out the shoots with the help of forcep and do not use hot forcep as it can damage your plant. Once the shoots have been taken out from the media jar, separate them carefully with the help of forcep and remove dried dead leaves and phenolic parts to avoid any kind of contamination. After removing dried dead parts and phenolics, put them in separate petri plates. Separate carefully to avoid any kind of damage. As you can see, it is a well-developed shoot. Shift it into the rooting media. You can shift a single shoot or a bunch of shoots. Cover the jar with the cap. Wrap the jars with parafilm to avoid any kind of contamination. Label the jars with the type of plant, type of media and date. These jars are now ready to shift into the growth room under aseptic environment. Clean the surface of hood with 70% ethanol after finishing your experiment. Turn off switch, light and blower. These cultured jars will be kept in growth room under 16 hours of light and 8 hours of dark with 40% of relative humidity at temperature of 24 degrees plus minus. Keep visiting your growth room in order to check any kind of or sign of contamination in your culture jars. It is a contaminated jar and you have to discard it immediately. Keep contamination free jars in your growth room for further growth.
Acclimatization. Acclimatization is the shifting of well-rooted plant into the greenhouse. After four to five weeks, plantlets are well-rooted. The elite and healthy plantlets must be acclimatized in stepwise manner. These plants are ready for acclimatization. Take out the jars from growth room. Before acclimatization, plants need to be washed in running tap water. Remove the cover and take out plant from media jar. With the help of forcep, carefully and wash the roots in tap water to remove the media attached to the roots. Put the plants in petri dish. And separate them carefully to avoid any kind of damage to the roots before taking them to the greenhouse. Do not expose plants to the direct sunlight as plants are highly sensitive. Perlite mixture and peat moss can also be used other than coconut husk according to the plant requirements. Dip the washed and separated plant in fungicide first, then in tap water to avoid the fungal infections because at this stage plants are highly sensitive. Cover the plant roots with coconut husk. Coconut husk is used to maintain the moisture. You can shift your plants in perlite mixture or peat moss according to plant requirements. Repeat the same process for all the plants. Keep the plants in greenhouse and do not expose them to the direct sunlight. Cover them with polythene sheet, which will be removed after 15 to 20 days as plants are highly sensitive at this stage. Uh, so participants that was uh, the end of uh, our first <coughs> day sessions uh, any question okay if there is no question then i'm asking my technical team to drop uh, their names and email ids in the chat box so you can uh, you can drop any question or query to, to them uh, whenever you have in your mind uh, from today's our session is going to be end. Thank you so much for your active participation. Tomorrow we will deal with the tissue culture of rice and we will share uh, the new link of, uh, for tomorrow's uh, workshop uh, shortly. Thank you so much to all of you.